Muscle growth is a process of increasing muscle fiber and its surrounding tissues, requiring both physical training and adequate nutrition, along with proper sleep. Muscles actually grow during sleep when the body mobilizes reserves for recovery, including the production of growth hormone. In this video, we'll discuss what exactly muscles grow from, the best exercises for gaining muscle mass, how often one should train, and the amount of protein needed in the diet. So, watch until the end for informative insights. From an anatomical perspective, muscle growth is not about increasing the number of muscle fibers, but rather changing their volume and increasing the density of myofascia and connective tissue. In other words, muscles don't increase in number. They only expand in volume. Additionally, the visual muscle growth process is closely linked to changes in the structure of sarcoplasm. The nutrient fluid surrounding muscle fibers. The more glycogen sarcoplasm can store, the higher the athlete's strength indicators and the greater the muscle volume. The speed of muscle growth depends on the athlete's body type, training experience, nutrition, and sufficient recovery time. What promotes muscle growth? Regular strength training for hypertrophy, a 10 to 15% increase in calorie intake, and a well-balanced diet, sufficient protein intake, and adequate recovery time. How to tell if muscles are growing? Firstly, the healing and subsequent muscle growth process is associated with the appearance of characteristic muscle soreness. Despite often attributing this pain to increased lactic acid production, Recent scientific research refutes this. Pain arises from a variety of factors. Secondly, an increase in body weight alongside strength gains also indicates successful muscle growth. However, note that this rule requires regularly increasing the weight you lift. Initiating growth processes implies a new level of stress for the muscles. And this stress can come from different types of exercise indicating the benefits of varying sports. Anatomy and physiology of muscle growth. From a scientific standpoint, it is more accurate to speak not of muscle growth, but of an increase in their volume. That is, muscle hypertrophy. Most scientists tend to believe that it's not the number of muscle fibers that changes significantly throughout life. It's largely determined genetically. Physical training indeed makes fibers stronger, but doesn't lead to an increase in their quantity. Visual muscle growth is primarily an increase in sarcoplasm, the nutrient fluid surrounding muscle fibers, glycogen reserves in the musculature, and the proliferation of connective tissues. Essentially, regular workouts teach an athlete's body to use energy reserves more efficiently and influence hormonal levels. Specifically, elevated testosterone levels aid muscles in growing faster. What promotes muscle growth? Strength training two to three times a week. Multi-joint basic exercises. Adequate glycogen levels in muscles. How much time do muscles need to grow? Research suggests that the muscle growth process begins approximately three to four hours after strength training and concludes within 36 to 48 hours, depending on the muscle group. This is why there's no sense in working the same muscle group more frequently than every two to three days. The ideal training frequency for mass gain in beginners is three workouts per week. Immediately after training, beginners' bodies require easily digestible proteins to halt catabolic processes in the muscles along with carbohydrates totaling no less than three to five ounces. Consume from one to one and a half ounces right after training and the rest within two to three hours. The period when the body prefers directing food energy to the muscles is called the metabolic or carbohydrate window. Best exercises for muscle growth. The most effective for muscle growth and glycogen synthesis is the so-called basic training, initiating hypertrophy processes. This training involves performing multi-joint basic exercises that engage multiple large muscle groups simultaneously. 
Exercises should be done in five to seven repetitions with heavy working weights, requiring perfect technique. Such strength workouts induce micro damage to muscle tissue, and their subsequent recovery leads to muscle growth. Moreover, basic hypertrophy training positively influences the body's production of a range of hormones essential for muscle growth, primarily testosterone and growth hormone. Remember that these hormones impact fat burning and definition. Muscle hypertrophy is an increase in the body's muscle mass through the growth of specific skeletal muscle groups. Hypertrophy signifies muscle growth and is the primary goal in bodybuilding, as increased muscle is essential for both strength and volume enhancement. The strategy for hypertrophy training involves basic exercises and heavy working weights. Muscle hypertrophy is divided into two types, myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. The first occurs by increasing the volume of muscle fiber cells with the actual number of cells remaining practically unchanged. The second occurs by increasing the nutrient fluid surrounding the fiber. In simple terms, the first affects strength, while the second affects muscle volume. The main difference in the metabolism of athletes compared to non-athletes is the ability to more effectively utilize carbohydrates and regulate insulin levels in the blood. In simple terms, athletes' bodies prefer converting incoming carbohydrates from food into glycogen and directing them to muscles rather than storing them as fat reserves. Regular muscle training gradually increases metabolism, requires a significant increase in caloric intake, and prompts athletes to eat more. Interestingly, modern scientists believe that there are no genetic lucky ones. And anyone can develop a sports metabolism after several years of appropriate diet and training. Despite the fact that muscle growth is not such a physiologically complex process, it is achieved exclusively with the right combination of factors such as regular strength training, increased caloric intake, and sufficient rest. For most beginners, three workouts a week are sufficient for muscle growth, as exceeding this frequency may lead to overtraining. How often do you usually train per week? Share your experience in the comments. Friends, we recommend watching another one of our videos where we discuss the changes that occur in the body if you jump rope every day. It will appear on your screen and the link will also be in the description and pinned comment. Thank you for watching this video until the end. If you found it interesting, please like and subscribe to the channel. There will be much more useful information coming up. Until next time.